Hey everyone, Zach here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 11 build 26040. This build includes a number of notable changes and enhancements over the last however many builds it's been. It's been a little while, but we're back and we have some new features to dive into. So let's waste no time. Uh, the first notable things going on in this build are with uh, a new feature called... Uh, well, it, it doesn't have a name. It's, it's just integration or, or more integration, I guess, with mobile devices. So if we come down to the Bluetooth and devices area here in settings and go down to mobile devices, this page in the settings app is new. Uh, and in addition to being able to set up phone link here, you can now just directly link a mobile device. So if we click on manage devices here, that will pop open um, a new app. And uh, from here, we can add a device. So you can see here, it logs into your Microsoft account. Uh, and then if you have any previous devices linked here, you, they will show up here as well. If we click on add device, uh, we'll go through this process now, because why not? It's gonna create a QR code. Uh, and now I need to open up my phone and scan that QR code. So give me a second. So this will of course download the link to Windows app. Uh, and from here, I can now insert the code in the wind uh, link to Windows app on Android. Now I'm being prompted to allow the link to Windows app to give it all of the permissions. Uh, and we're done. It says mobile device is now linked. Click continue to manage your mobile devices in Windows settings. And how this differs from phone link is that this is just for the photo notifications. So um, well, at least for now, this might expand to be more in the future. But uh, yeah, this, is, this isn't Phone Link. Phone Link is a separate app, and obviously that does SMS and uh, phone calls and whatnot. But this just seems to be, for now at least, just related to photos. So if we close out of that, and I now go ahead and take a photo. So if I take a photo, which I have just done, there it is. It now pops up on my... Um, computer here and you can see oh it escaped but you can saw there's a little th sort of thumbnail there as well and if I click on that there you go it opens up in snipping tool which is an interesting choice I'm surprised that it opened up in snipping tool and not you know photos but there you go so we can now save that to our computer somewhere uh, we'll just save it to our downloads folder because why not and just like that, that photo which I just took on my phone is now stored on my computer. And I can now I can take it into photos if I want to. So if I double click on that, there we go. I'm now in photos and we can now go ahead and uh, make some edits or whatever it is you may want to do. Like so. Brilliant. So there you are. That is the new mobile devices experience. Once again, separate from phone link for some reason. But um, hey, there you are. Moving right along, another new change in this build is Task Manager here has another new icon. So yes, I believe they updated the icon for Task Manager when Windows 11 first rolled around, or at least with version 22H2 uh, in 2022. Um, and apparently they didn't like it because they, they've updated it again. You can sort of see it up there and it's also there on the taskbar as well. Um, yeah, it's bluer. It's a bluer icon. And um, yeah, so up next is a change that I'm surprised is actually being made given how long it's been since they last touched it, but they're updating the UI for installing Windows. Um, the last time this was updated in any real way was I think Windows 7 era, Windows 8 era, something like that. It's been over a decade for sure. They've made minor edits to it here and there since Windows 8 to today. But so yeah, it's been updated with a, a more modern design. I don't think it's, you know, a Windows 11 aesthetic. I think it's still more Windows sort of 8 era, Windows 10 era but it's better than what it was before, so I'm going to accept it for now. So here's what it looks like. I recorded this earlier, where you just sort of go through the process like so. So there are no new settings. It's pretty much the exact same setup process. Um, it's just the UI looks different. You can see here it looks a little bit more modern. You can move the window around now, which uh, is something you couldn't do before. Um, yeah, so it's a little bit more modern. It's still using the Windows Vista basic theme for the <laughs> for the window that's what i'm saying like this is still very much a legacy windows experience this isn't a modernized thing by any means but uh yeah you can see that this ui is quite different this is the um selecting a location to install the os you can format partitions and create partitions here um, as well as uh, install drivers if you need to uh, what is new is that you'll get a prompt uh, after this page to Sort of, it, which just sort of recaps everything you've selected. So you agree that yes, this will wipe your system, et cetera, et cetera, which is normal for installing an OS clean. Uh, but then 
look, there's a web link here. There's actually quite a few web links, but if you click on any of them in this interface, it will just give you this little window that says, please visit this website at the long URL if you'd like to learn more, because there's no browser included with the installation um, image, of course. And then you get this modern interface, which again is modernized. It's, this is a straight out of Windows 8, Windows 10. Um, but yeah, that's that's what it is now, which is pretty nice. Another change with this build is if we go into uh, an area here in File Explorer and attempt to create a compressed uh, file, uh, you can right click, go to Compress 2, and there's a new option called Additional Options, which will surprisingly pop up a legacy interface, which is new in this build, <laughs> keep in mind. They've introduced a new legacy interface. This isn't a modern XAML thing or anything. It's or WinUI. It's, it, this quite literally is an interface that could appear as far back as Windows 7 or even beyond before that. Um, but anyway, whatever, the point is that you have more additional archive format options here as such, and you can change the compression method as well. So previously that wasn't possible, it would just default to whatever it was defaulting to using 7-zip or tar. Um, but now, hey, you've got a bunch of different other, option, uh, other options and compression methods, as well as the ability to adjust the uh, compression level, which is pretty fun. You press on create, boom, that has created as such, pretty nice. Okay, so let, let's talk about some features that aren't technically enabled yet. Uh, one of the features, well, it's actually not the only feature we're going to talk about here, is the taskbar. They're finally adding animations to uh, thumbnails on the taskbar. So this is a thing that's on Windows 10 and Windows 8 and Windows 7. Uh, and for some reason, Windows 11, when they rebuilt the taskbar, they forgot to add animations to the thumbnails when you hover over an app icon. But they are now finally working on bringing that back. It's not finished yet, as you can see here, the actual... Um, thumbnail isn't representative of the app you're hovering over and, and it doesn't actually show anything and the button doesn't work but it is proof that they are working on actually introducing those um, animations back to the taskbar so if we open up a few more apps here just to give it uh, something to uh, animate with let's open up that 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 okay and now we can hover over that and then we can move over here and yeah you can see it's animating well again this isn't finished it needs to be functional um but it's getting there and uh, yeah the animation is coming back all right now since it's been a little while since our last build video let's just sort of go over a couple of additional things that uh, have been added to the builds over the last few weeks uh, if we go into energy saver mode in uh, settings here so if we go down to system go down to power and battery we have an energy saver mode here, which will reduce your energy consumption um, by limiting background activities. Well, that essentially uh, translates to um, pulling less power from the wall or from the battery if using a laptop. If I turn this on, the screen will darken slightly. And uh, I'm assuming Windows is now going to sort of underclock the CPU a little bit just so it uses less power. And this is a feature that actually applies to desktops as well so if you turn this feature on it doesn't have to have a battery it doesn't have to be a laptop if you're using it on it with a desktop that's plugged straight into the wall you can enable this and you'll even get a little uh, energy saver icon down here uh, on desktop which is kind of cool uh, in the system tray so that's nice to see if we jump over to system and go down to nearby share microsoft has added a ui for renaming your device so if you click in here Boom, there you go. That's a brand new renaming device interface, which uh, previously wasn't a thing. All right, and uh, another thing they've been working on is a, a richer weather interface on the lock screen. Uh, this is what it looks like. Well, there's actually two variants they're testing. This is one of them, which is the less interesting one, <laughs> unfortunately. But there's a more fun looking one that has an actual sort of glyph of the weather. So it would be a cloud or sun or rain or something like that. But this one just quite literally just tells you the weather via text. It is what it is. And uh, if you click on it, you would think it would open up a native weather experience, beautiful, similar to something like the iPhone or, or the iPad. No, does the iPad have weather? I can't remember. But you get what I'm saying. Uh, no, this won't even open the widgets panel. <laughs> it will bypass all of that and uh, take you straight to um, MSN.com. Um, because <laughs> that's just the way things are these days. And it sucks. So there you are. So there you are. That is a quick look at build 26040 and some of the other minor changes that have been added to some previous builds over the last couple of months. Uh, thank you so much for watching and we shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.